been some very, very clear winners and losers. Uh, equity and preferred shareholders have, ha have seen their dividends eliminated entirely, uh, whereas holders of subordinated debt have basically been made whole on those, on those payments. So with regard to Asian central banks, for example, that hold large amounts of subordinated debt, uh, they certainly have come out of this far better than some of the, the local or domestic uh, equity owners. What really is yet to be determined is how the Fed is, or if the Fed will mitigate the impact on, uh, on some of the regional stakeholders, the preferred shareholders in particular, um, and there's quite a number of regional banks in the U.S. that have very large holdings of preferred shares as part of their capital base. And the, the complete decline, uh, the elimination of the dividend and the, the precipitous decline in the share prices of those preferred shares is going to have a pretty significant impact on those banks' capital base. So it, it's very much been a, a mix where anybody holding the subordinated debt or the debt of, of the GSEs, uh, the government-sponsored agencies, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, have come out fairly well of, out of this uh, uh, situation, the preferred shareholders and the equity holders not so much. But what's interesting is that in a typical insolvency situation, you would expect that the equity would, would go to zero and that the preferred shares may be worth very little. Uh, that, that isn't the case at this point as both the equity and preferred shares uh, will, still, will still continue to exist. They simply won't be paying a dividend for uh, the foreseeable future. Conservative estimates would suggest that the hit to the U.S. government could be 250 or 300 billion, kind of as a minimum in this case. But the bigger question, or the more interesting question for me, is what does it mean for future issues in the financial markets? And I think we all believe there will be future issues, whether it's Lehman Brothers or uh, Merrill Lynch or some other entity in the U.S. that runs into similar troubles with their capital. You know, we saw how the Federal Reserve reacted with Bear Stearns back in January. We've seen now how they've dealt with with the collapse of Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, where does it stop? What is the extent of the liabilities that the U.S. taxpayer essentially is going to be asked to, to absorb? And what does it mean for markets going forward? It certainly doesn't suggest to me that you go out and buy the shares of financial entities without regard for the underlying health because equity holders have not fared very well in either the Bear Stearns situations or, or the Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae situations. Um, from the standpoint of the U.S. citizen or U.S. taxpayer, I, I think that is again a big, big question mark in terms of how it will all sort out. Uh, but I do think the Federal Reserve is, is attempting to mitigate what could be a disastrous situation had they not acted uh, in either of these situations.